Hello and welcome to the Pensacola State College Library website. Today we're going to give you a basic library instruction workshop and show you how to use our catalog to find different books and how to use our databases to find academic articles. From our website, which is pensacolastate.edu slash library, there are a couple things that are available to you right away. First is our hours and locations tab. This will let you know where our different libraries are located, how to get in touch with librarians, and when we're open. Another thing that you can use is going to be our guides tab. This gives you access to some of our lib guides or research guides. There are lots of these available to you for specific classes and for different topics you might be studying. Here's an example for our American literature course to 1870. There are a couple things that you can get here. First, you can find different books that might be related to your course. You can also find criticism within our databases that you can use for certain assignments. We've also got help as far as writing your paper and doing some of your citations. There are lots of different things available through these, and there are lots of different ones available for different classes. We have things for our nursing program. We have things for our radiology program. We have things for our culinary arts program. There are lots of these to discover, so take some time to look through these to see what relates to your courses. If there's not one available for your class, speak with your instructor, and we can and see if we can make one for you. But the big thing from our website is going to be our search feature. Our search feature lets you look through everything that the library has available within our catalog, whether it's a physical item here in the library, maybe a DVD, maybe a book, and all of our digital items as well, something like an academic article or a streaming video. Let's keep things simple and use something that you might use for, say, an argumentative paper. Let's say you need to research something on, say, prescription drugs. Let's try that for our search and see what we get. From here, we'll see that we get about 2 million results. Now, right now, we're just using the keywords prescription drugs, which is going to cover a lot of different things. And this is a lot of stuff to kind of sort through. But again, this is looking for everything that the library has, physical and digital, that you can use for this topic. Let's make it a little bit easier. Let's just say you're looking for a physical item in the library, say a book that you want to check out. Up at the very top, there is the Books tab. This will give you access to all the physical things that you can check out from the different libraries. We've got about 250 items that we've found from this search. Let's take a look at what we've got available to you. Well, if that's too much stuff to look through, because this is a lot of stuff that you can kind of work from, there are ways that you can narrow this down even further. On the left-hand side of the page, there is the filter results by. You can narrow down your results by a couple different options. First, you can narrow it down by the location of that item. Pensacola, Pensacola means that it's located on the Pensacola campus. Pensacola, Warrington means it's on our Warrington campus. Pensacola, Milton is our Milton campus. And Pensacola e-resources are available from anywhere. Everything that we take a look at today, you have access from everywhere. You just need internet access to see all of this. Let's just say you want to look for a book. You could use a different format for that. You could choose the publication year of when this thing was made. You could even use a subject type. That's like adding in another keyword for your search to find this material. Let's just say we want to look at all the items that are available on the Pensacola campus. If you click Pensacola, Pensacola, we'll see that we have about 70 results from this campus. Now, there are other ways that you can narrow down further from here, too. You can narrow it down over here on the right by relevancy. But why don't we look for our newest items? Let's use our publication date newest. The first item that we get is called The Mastermind. It was published in about 2019, but it says that it's been checked out currently. Let's see what else is available, though. We have another item called The Opioid Crisis. This was published in 2019, and it does say that it's available. Well, if we need to know a little bit more about this material, why don't we click on the title to see the bibliographic or summary page for this item. This will let you know the title for it, the publisher, who wrote it, how long this item is, and it should give you a summary of what this item is about as well. Think of this as like a back of the book summary for like a novel. This will tell you more information on whether or not you want to check it out. After you've read through this page, you can find out a little bit more information about the title before you even go looking for it. That sounds good. I want this. Where can I find it? If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there should be a location section. This will let you know exactly where the item is located so you can check it out. Pensacola, Pensacola circulation means that it's available in the Pensacola campus up in our stacks on our second floor. It should be followed by a long combination of letters and numbers. This is the call number, or it could be like called the address for the book. This is where you're going to look within our stacks to find this material. Right now, you can go find this item, take it to the front circulation desk, and check it out for an entire month. If this was a DVD, you could check it out for up to seven days. Now, let's say you're having trouble finding this item. Using this cataloging system is a little difficult when you're first trying it out, but ask any librarian or staff member, and we'd be happy to help you find this. But what if this item wasn't located on the Pensacola campus, or if you were taking my classes more often on, say, the Milton or Warrington campus? How can you get it? Well, we can actually send it to those campuses, or we can hold it for you on a campus if you need some help getting it later. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, you can click Place a Hold. This will ask, allow you to place a hold on the item, and we will pull it for you and make it available to you, or send it to your respective campus. 
This will, however, ask you to log in using your borrower ID and Penner password. This is going to be your library card number and your password associated with that. However, there it might be a little difficult to find. This number is a long 14-digit number starting with 25101 at the bottom of your PSC student ID card, or it can be found in your, in your Spyglass account. If you type this in, and then your pin or password, which will be the last four digits of your social security number, this will log you into the library's account into your library account. You'll notice that your name appears here in the upper right in the upper left hand corner. That means that you're logged in. You can check your account and place holds from here. You can also log in through Canvas. Canvas is a great way to do it because it's just a one click thing. If you click on one of your classes, we'll just use this as an example. On the left hand side, there should be announcements, syllabus. There should be a button for the PSC library. Some courses have this enabled, some do not. Ask your instructor and they'd be happy to enable it for you. If you click the PSC library, you'll have one more button that says Launch Pensacola State College. If you click on this, this will automatically log you into the library's catalog and you will automatically be logged into your account. Let's get back to that reserve page. From here, you can click choose the location where you'd like to have the item sent. Maybe you are taking classes at the Warrington campus more often. You can have the item sent there. You can click Place Request and the item should be available for you within a day or two. You should receive a phone call or an email when it is available. Now that we've placed an item on hold, let's see what else is available to us. Let's click back on the All tab to see what's still there. We're still working with about 2 million things, but let's just say we want to look at things that are available online, things that are like academic articles or streaming video that you can watch right now. If you click on the Articles tab at the top of the page, this will give you all the digital items that you can, read, or that you can see through the library. If you start to scroll through this, you'll notice that it's, you're inundated with a ton of stuff. Now we could use the filter results by here on the left to kind of narrow things down a little bit more, but that's still a lot of stuff to really sort through. We could narrow it down by the format, maybe a news story, maybe a review of a book, or maybe a news report. We could narrow it down by the publication year, or we could use a subject topic to kind of narrow this down further. Now our keywords, we could add a few more of those to kind of narrow our search. But instead of looking through our catalog, which compiles everything that's available through the library, let's just look in one database. A library database is a collection of materials that's searchable within that database. And it's only uploaded with things that we choose to upload into that. And it's only going to be good academic research for your upcoming papers and assignments. It's easier to see these things than to talk about it. So why don't we click on the databases by title tab at the very top of the page. When you click databases by title, you'll get a giant list of all the databases that are available to you. Databases all work the same way, but they look a little different and can give you different results. So depending on the topic that you're looking for, you can use a different database. Think of it kind of like a specialty store. So if you're looking for something kind of generic, say a set of batteries, maybe a toothbrush, you can go to a large box store to find those things. But if you need something more specific, maybe you need a part for your computer, maybe you need a part for your car, like a spark plug, you need to go somewhere more specific. Databases kind of work the same way. We have some that are generic, and we have some that are very specific to different topics. You could click on the little I next to each one to find out more information about each one, but that can take a lot of time to find exactly what you're looking for. So instead, we've made it a little bit easy for you by organizing them by subject. Here you'll see that we have it organized by different topics that you might be researching. If you were writing a business paper, you could look underneath the business uh, section to find different things related to, say, the stock market, or different things that are related to maybe different companies in the world. If you were, say, working on a literature paper, maybe you were writing about Romeo and Juliet, you could find critical analysis of plays and poems and characters within this. But let's say you want to search for something a little bit more generic. You could look underneath our general databases to cover everything. Something that we like to use a whole lot here in the library is going to be the second option called Academic Search Complete. It's a very bare bones looking database, but it works really well for a lot of students. From here, you'll see that it just looks like a search engine, and it works pretty much the same way. From here, all you need to do is type in your keywords that you're looking for. Let's keep looking for that prescription drug search and see what we get. When we search for prescription drugs, you'll notice that we get about 45,000 articles, almost 46,000. That's a ton of stuff to sort through. But the database also gives you tools to narrow that down even further. This search result is a lot fewer than what we found in our catalog because it's only looking in this one specific database, Academic Search Complete. Had we searched in one of, say, our business databases, we may find more or less. And say if we search in some of our literature databases, we would have probably found a lot less. 
but if we looked in our health and medicine databases, we probably would have found a lot more. Depending on what you're researching, you'll use a different database. But Academic Search Complete is a great place to get started because it covers everything. Let's limit these results a little bit by using refine results here on the left. Let's limit it to a couple different things. First, always make sure that you have full text selected. This will give you full unlimited access to articles right away. You don't have to go searching for them, and you don't have to request them from different libraries. Right now, we're finding everything pretty easily, but you'll notice that they might find an article that says that you need to request a copy. You'll have to fill out a little form, and then it'll take a couple days for it to be processed. But if you always want to see everything that's available to you right away, you can always choose articles that are listed under full text. This gives you full unlimited access to that article right now. No jumps, to, no hoops to jump through. A little further from there, you can narrow it down by scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Scholarly peer-reviewed journals are going to be coming from experts in those fields. Earlier we had about 46,000, now we're down to about 28,000. So it's narrowed down thing, so it's narrowed down our articles to only articles written by experts in those fields that have been reviewed by experts in those fields. You won't really find things from popular resources like a magazine or nothing from a piece of journalism perhaps. This can be great, some students prefer to use these, but they can be a little difficult to read sometimes. Again, they are for people in that field. It might be a little tough to understand, but eventually this is all that you'll be using for your research. If, say, you want something from maybe Time Magazine, then having scholarly peer-reviewed journals is fine to keep that unselected. Next, you can narrow down by publication date. When was this thing made? When was this thing written? I like to tell students to narrow things down to about the last 20 years if they want to look for something a little bit more relevant. This will give you the most up-to-date, relevant information to that topic. You'll notice that we still only drop down our number by a little bit, but this is the most relevant information right now, things that have been published most recently. Let's narrow this down even further and look and say the last four or five years. Now we're down to about a 10,000 result number. This is getting pretty good, and that's a pretty good number to get started with. But there are other ways that you can narrow this down even further. You can narrow it down by the source type. If you're only looking for academic journals, you can find them from here. Maybe you only want a magazine article, something from like Time Magazine. Maybe you want something from just a newspaper, a piece of journalism, something like the New York Times. You can find that here as well. There are other ways that you can narrow down from here as well. You can choose by the publisher who has made this thing, who has made it available to you. Maybe the publication. Is it coming from a certain publish, from a certain published work? Something like Pharmacy Times might be a good choice for our subject right now. You can even narrow it down by language. There are lots of tools available through this, but I recommend students just kind of click around to see what's available to you. From here, it's pretty easy to kind of find what you're looking for. Just look for an interesting title. Let's click on this first one to see what's interesting to us from here. From here, we get another bibliographic or summary page for this item. From here, we can see our title, who are our authors for this particular article, and then we can find the source where it's coming from. We can even see how long this article is. Then at the very bottom, we're going to see the abstract. The abstract is the summary for this particular article. Typically, it's about a paragraph or two, and it will tell you all the information about the article before you even read it. It's a great thing to read this first to decide whether or not you want to use this article for your research. You'll find articles that might be 20, 100 pages long, but they will give you a little abstract to let you know more about them. This is a great thing to do if you're trying to find a lot of sources quickly. Further down, you can find out more information about the authors, where they've written before, the word count for the article, and then you can even read it in plain text down here at the bottom. If, say, you want to see the article, however, in its full form as it would appear in that article, or in that journal rather, you can find it through the PDF full text here on the left. When you click this, you'll see the article as it appears. If there are any images, if there are any photos, they'll appear here. If there are any charts, they'll appear here as well. This is also where they'll cite any information that they pull from this. This is also where they will have their footnotes and any other citations that they may use. This is what you'll use for your research. This is where you'll find good quotes and great information for your project and for your assignments. Now that you've found an article, that's great. You've got lots more that you can search in. But before you leave this page, there are a couple things that you can do to actually use this article a little bit better. You could download it from here. You could print it out. Even over here on the right-hand side, there are a couple tools for you. There's an email button that will email you this article so you never have to find it again. You never have to replicate your search. You can always get back to it easily, and you have it stored within your email. You can send it to multiple emails as well. There's also a permalink button here on the bottom you'll be able to just use this link to always get back to this article. The most valuable thing for students, however, is the citation. You always need to make sure that you're citing your work. So there is a cite button here on the right. 
If you click on this, you'll be able to pull up the citation for your specific assignment. If, say, you're writing an MLA, here's your MLA citation pretty much done for you. If you're writing an APA, here's your citation pretty much done for you. We do recommend that students go back in and fix these up just a little bit. They can have mistakes in them, and they may not look correct if you just copy and paste them into your paper. Now, this is searching within one database, but again, there are lots of them available to you. Let's look at another general database. This one's called Academic OneFile. Academic OneFile looks totally different, but it works the same way. If we search for our, our keywords one more time, you'll notice that we get about a million results just through this one database. There are lots of things available to you, and, these have, and this has the same tools available to you as well. Here on the right instead, we can organize it by subject, document type, maybe we're only looking for peer-reviewed journals, but let's just click on the first one just to show you what it looks like. When you click on this article, you'll see what you, you'll see kind of an abstract right off the bat. You'll see it in entire plain text, and you'll see a couple other things that are available to you right off the bat. You'll see the authors, you'll see the, pub, the publication, you'll even see the word count for it. There are up, up here at the very top, you'll see those same tools as far as printing it, downloading it, and also sending it to yourself in an email, or maybe a Google Drive if you choose to use that. There's also a citation button up here at the top as well, and it's pretty simple to use these too. Again, we do recommend that you use these, but go back in and double check them. It might help you a lot if you're working from there. There's still a lot available to you from all of our databases, so explore using them. Some databases work better for other assignments. Depends on what you're looking for. But if you ever need help, there's always a librarian available to help you with all this process. Thanks for watching. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to contact any librarian. Again, our hours and locations are located on our front page of our website, pensacolastate.edu library. Have a wonderful day, and if you ever need some help, we'll see you in the library.